Yo, what's up, guys? The Insane Game Freak here. Uh, I know there's been new Pokemon, and I know there's been a lot of new information, and I know I haven't talked about a lot. So, let's talk about some stuff Pokemon related, and just talk about my thoughts in Gen 7 as a whole. There's not going to be anything super. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's not going to be a lot of editing, I guess is what I mean to say. Um, so, let's just get into it. So. Gen 7 has been a very interesting generation so far. This is also a very interesting way of Game Freak announcing Pokemon information. Because usually, when it came to the older games, it was just kind of... You kind of got some beginning stuff. You got some slight leaks in Core Coro for certain Pokemon. And then you usually got like a really quick info dump near the game's launch. Because, you know, we can't have a Pokemon game not get leaked. That would be some shit, wouldn't it? Um, because fuck you, that's why. Anyways, uh, due to all of this, it seems like Generation 7 wants to handle things a little differently and not, uh, and kind of just casually release these Pokemon. Because then everybody's seeing them at around the same time. I mean, obviously we're still dealing with leaks, but to be honest, I'd rather it be leaked individually than have the entire fucking roster leaked which is what happened with X and Y, and that wasn't fun for anyone. And I mean, you could still kind of avoid it, but that's not the point. It also seems like Generation 7 wants to change the game, like a lot. Uh, the reason why I say this is because a lot of these Pokemon, these have been some of the most divisive Pokemon mixed with some of the most interesting in abilities. They've been int they're introducing a lot of new metagame abilities that somewhat seem broken on certain Pokemon, and has the potential to wreck shit, but at the same time, they're also trying to change up how Pokemon look. Like, a lot of these don't look like normal Pokemon, or Pokemon you would expect. And I'm, I'm lacking the variation, because the biggest issue with... The biggest issue with Gen 6 was that Gen 6 didn't feel like a real step forward. It felt like you did as much as you thought you needed to do, and then you just kind of dicked around with everything else. Like, when you go from Gen 5, which is arguably like the best pre-3D generation. I actually think it is the best pre-3D generation overall. And then you go to Gen 6, which is literally kind of, we made things 3D and then that's about it. Oh, and we make evolutions. You know, we got new Pokemon and the new Pokemon were cool, but it didn't feel like they were trying to like change how you play Pokemon. They kind of just streamlined everything. Which is cool, but you didn't really add a lot into the meta except for the Mega Evolutions, which seemed unbalanced as fuck to begin with because only because the Pokemon that got them, some of them really didn't need Megas because they were already broken to begin with. Um, and it made things, and you could kind of say that was like the second stagnation of Pokemon. I think the first Gen Four to me also feels like stagnation, but the thing that helped out Gen Four is that Gen Four was at least um. Gen 4 at least had had good evolution in the meta game, which is kind of what Gen 6 is. Good evolution in the meta game, but the actual game itself was pretty poor. It, Gen 4's case, it was because the game was slow as fuck. Uh, Gen 6's case is because it was just kind of basic as fuck. Um, Gen 7 doesn't seem to want to repeat those problems. Um, it already has more intrigue than Gen 6 just with the Lily character and the whole what thing... Yeah, obviously, what's in what's in the bag, Lily? What's in the motherfucking bag? <laughs> what's in the bag? Put it in the bag. Give me the bag, Berg. Anyways, uh, you know, obviously, what's in the bag, and then her plot relevance, and then the fact that we also have yet to see a gym leader. I think at this point in time, we would have at least seen one gym leader, and we haven't seen any gym leaders, which gets into another video that I'm going to make later on. So I'm not going to talk too much about the gym leader situation. And then you get to the Pokemon themselves and their different abilities and, and what they look like. And, oh, my God, this generation ain't playing no games with, oh, you're going to remember Gen 7. Like, this is actually one of those generations where I'm going to sit there and go, you're going to remember Gen 7 whether you want to or not. That's the way I, I feel about Gen 7 right now. And we got to kind of have that conversation. So let's get down into the nitty gritty and talk about the Gen 7. Now, I've already did a discussion with Tyrone the God 3 for a while back, so there's no point in covering the starters or the legendaries anymore. So we'll, we'll just start with all the, um, 
the Pokemon we didn't know about when I was making when that video came out, which I believe was literally is literally everything else. So let's start off with Rock Ruff. Giving me my resident dog being a rock type, which is cool. But honestly, I would say rock types are probably another one of those types that are highly neglected. So I'm hoping this thing is a combination type. Like, it's not, like, Rock Ruff's evolution is a combination of, like, rock and something else. Because rock on its own really doesn't serve enough of a purpose, and it can get squashed. Rock is a type that really needs some fucking balancing, because rock, to me, is worthless by itself. Granted, 90% of the time, rock isn't by itself. It's usually, like, a dual type, like rock and ground or some shit. But rock is another underappreciated type, so I'm hoping Rock Ruff is a change in that formula and it's something different. Komala. That is a cute ass koala Pokemon. Just like we got Pan Cham last generation. It's another wow. I'm surprised we haven't had a koala Pokemon before. Um, what really has me interested, and I think it has a lot of people interested, is its ability. And this is what I'm talking about Gen 7 trying to change the game. Introducing a new ability that pretty much prevents it from being hit by any other status. Other than because it's because of its description of being like constantly sleepy or asleep. I'm curious. And then on top of that, I'm curious if this thing will evolve into a normal fighting type because it feels like it could. It, it reminds me of Timber a lot, actually. And I don't think that's intentional, but it does. I'm curious if this thing might, this thing has the ability to turn into like the new, Kind of like the the girt like the girder evolution where it gets like the, the log it has gets bigger and it gets a lot more threatening physically, or if it'll turn into like a slacking, where it looks more lazy. But like they're both it's the same kind of combo. Actually, I think that's what it might be a fusion of girder and slacking, where it's like big as fuck, it's still sleepy, but can wreck the shit out of you. It also it also makes me wonder if its ability will change if it evolves, which I doubt. Because why give the pre-evolution a new ability and not the uh, the evolution? And I hope, and that's also banking on Komala evolving. Um, next up is Picky Peck, which uh, I'm not like in love with because I like woodpeckers, but I don't want it to look just like a woodpecker. The one thing I don't really care for is that when it comes to legendary birds, uh. Fucking Pokemon, Ganfrick has a tendency of just making them look samey as fuck. And samey Pokemon aren't bad, but it's like, when you're in seven generations, it's like, dude, we want to see something different. And so I'm hoping to God, it's kind of like how Fletchling was, where it evolves into something different. It doesn't, like, I would like a new flying type that isn't just flying and normal like everything else was. Star Raptor having a, a better move pool. And uh, Talonflame having a better ability and typing change. I just want Piggy Peck to be different. And considering how different everything else is, I would hope so. Young Goose being the first different Pokemon. This, for some reason, all the starting Pokemon in this generation seem like they could be relatively good mid to late game. Because Komala has that potential. Rock Ruff has that potential. Piggy Peck has that potential. But I'm leaning towards no because fuck me. That's why... And Young Goose, bruh, well, I already made my video, so I don't want to go too much into it again, but just say, Young Goose, if it has an evolution and it's this generation's fur it, please let it be something, like, kind of creepy looking. Like, I want it to keep its creepy look, where it's like, oh, I'm just a normal mongoose. Look at my teeth, motherfucker. Oh, I'm just a normal puppy. Look at my teeth. Also, I want to know what its rival is. Uh, because we know that it's based on a mongoose, and they did the same thing with Zangoose in Gen 3 and Surviper, which means there's got to be a snake Pokemon in the future that's going to be introduced that is different. And hopefully that'll have an evolution too, because I can't see them just staying like this. Like, like Young Goose, that seems, uh, it seems too basic, and it seems like it has too much potential for evolutions. So I can't see it not evolving. And then we get into our really interesting uh, prospect, which is our bug for this generation, which is Grubbin, Charger Bug, and Vic and Vicavolt, which I probably would say Vicavolt, Vicavolt is probably at least within my top three favorites so far, which I'm not I'm probably not going to do like a top ten or that uh, until I feel comfortable doing so. 
Victor Vogt, especially because of the rumors that this thing is going to be a late game evolution, unlike every other bug type where like it doesn't evolve into its final form until like its 30s. Because we've seen Vicka Volt and he was at like level 41, like Charger Bug was pretty high in level. There's a rumor going around that this evolutionary line is a late game evolutionary line, which would be cool because most bug Pokemon kind of get left in the dust. That happened with uh, Butterfree, Bee Drill. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, Beautify, Dust Tox. Um, that happened with like Combi and Vesper Queen. Like, certain bugs just, which is weird, because Gen 5 actually had a huge emphasis on bugs. And we did get Volcarona, which was a fucking beast. But, uh, we kind of need some more badass bug representation. And Vicar Volt would share the same typing as Gaventula. Which I don't know how Gaventula actually does in competitive, because I haven't checked in a while. But that probably tells me it doesn't do that well, considering I had to check. Vicar Volt looks like it could be like a combination of Gaventula and, and Ninjask. And son, if that happens, this is gonna be legit. And in fact, that it already has an ability that negates one of its weaknesses. It's already pretty hype in its own right. And then we get to fucking Drompa, which is old grandpa dragon who has anger problems. This thing reminds me of the dragon from the never ending story. Am I like the only guy who feels like that? Like, that's the first thing I thought of when I saw it. I was like, this thing reminds me of that dragon from the never-ending story. Uh, I don't, like, his design is okay, and I don't mind its ability. I'm just curious. This thing doesn't look like it's going to have an evolution. I'll be honest with you. Uh, and if it did, it probably is going to be terrifying. Because Drompa kind of hits that weird mix for me for where it's, like, okay to, like, being kind of creepy. Uh, I feel like its evolutionary line is going to go full creeper. And I don't want that to happen. And and speaking of Creeper, let's talk about Bruxish. What the fuck? Oh my lord. Um They've done this before. I actually would think this is like the fish variant of Jinx. That's what it reminds me of. But once again, it has like another game-changing ability with dazzling. And what is that? Oh, it stops priority moves from happening. Quick attack, nope. Fake out, nope. Aqua Jet, nope. Huh. They're really trying to fix the meta. They're pretty, they're trying to, like, change the meta game again. Which is very interesting, because they can't really do anything else in terms of, like, the basic physical and special attacks. But adding new abilities can make things a lot interesting, because when you introduce a new ability, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the only Pokemon that, learn that, that, that can learn that ability. They're just currently the only Pokemon that know... They're like the poster child for the ability, but not the ability is only tied to that one Pokemon. And Dazzling is another one of those. Ooh, shit. Cutie Fly comes off as what the fuck ever Pokemon, but potential for evolution is interesting. I don't think, uh, by the way, I don't think Bruxish is going to evolve either. I think that thing is going to stay creepy looking as fuck, and it actually looks like a fucking like a woman who would assault you on the street. I don't know if I would say an older woman, but she looks like one of them chicks who, like, doesn't know how to dress properly and is all over you in a minute. Which sounds kind of appealing, but it really isn't. Cutie Fly looks basic as fuck, but has the potential to be something really cool. Uh, right now, I believe it's, what, Bug and Fairy. We'll see. Also, another Water Psychic, so that's cool for brushes. So let's get down to my hedgehog, and I'm hoping if we can get something Sonic related from this, I'd be so hyped. I don't know if we are, but I want some. I want like a cool hedgehog. I I want. I didn't get my rabbit represent. I got my rabbit representation, and I didn't like Bunnelby and Diggersby. I want like a really cool rabbit representation, and if I can get me a cool as fuck hedgehog representation right now, that'd be great. Uh, our steel electric hedgehog, Toga Damaru. Which is interesting. We'll see how this goes. It looks okay to me. It's another one of those. It's it's a weird mix of like traditional Pokemon looks, but like, in with like a basic design. Um, whereas some of these Pokemon just look like look like out there. And actually, speaking of out there, that kind of gets into our next three, the latest 
three to four that were introduced. Uh, let's start off with Salandit, which is another Pokemon that has like a cool ass ability. Actually, this is the other one that still looks like Pokemon ish to me. Uh, it has a cool ass ability with the whole ability of corrosion and being able to like poison anything. Uh, we don't know how far that goes. Like, can you poison another Salandit? And if you can, that just means there's a double edged sword ability. Which isn't going to mean too much, but it is interesting. I like the fact that it's a reference. The Salandit is obviously a, a mix of Salamander and Bandit. And the Bandit, head, like the fact that the top part of his head is black is a reference to like an anime. When you saw like Bandits, they always wore like a bag over their head and it was black and they tied over and they had like the little nooses and shit. That's what it looks like he's wearing. He's like wearing like a Bandit headband and some shit. I kind of like the fire thing coming out of his tail. It looks cool as fuck. And then we get to the two new ones that were recently announced today, which is Kiteraguma. Kiteraguma. Kiteraguma, yeah, to Kiteraguma. This thing, a lot of anime fans have already kind of said, oh, look, it's the bear from Danganronpa. Actually, if you played the games, you would know that reference, too. I'm pretty sure there's fan art already floating around with those two. And if it is, I will find it, and it will be the thumbnail for this video. This thing, which is a normal and fighting type, which means it has an immunity to ghosts, but has a fucking weakness to its own typing, which is always great. This thing confuses me. Because apparently it's strong. It's that weird... It's like... it's a. There's a few other Pokemon that are like this, but it's that weird... I'm strong as fuck with like a cute exterior. There are a few Pokemon like this, and I oh, like actually like how Happiny was in the anime. Cute as fuck, but I can kill you. Except this looks even worse because this thing has no expression. I feel like this thing's expression is not going to change, and it will just murder you with the same like dead ass face on it, just like dead ass, and it's just punching the shit out of you. Dead ass, dead ass, dead ass, dead ass. And then we get to the one that a lot of people have been kind of like, what in the fuck is happening right now? And that is Mimiku. Mimiku? Yeah, Mimiku. Which is our first ghost and fairy type, along with, you know, Salandit also being our first poison and fire type. There's a lot of new dual typings going around that I'm pretty excited about too. Um which is a which makes sense when you understand its design. A lot of people looked at its looked at the obvious Pikachu reference and went, "Oh, it's like a fake ass creepy looking Pikachu." It's not. It's really people got to look under that Pikachu face. They're actually eyes and the thing in the back isn't a tail, it's a stick. This thing is going to be one of those... This thing better be used in a ghost house episode. It really better because it has the potential. There, You know how they got some Pokemon that you really just want to see? Like without their hidden uh, aspects? I think another Pokemon like this would be... Uh, oh. There's another Pokemon that's like this too. That has like some... It's covering itself with like so... A representation of the Pokemon, like Cubone. Like Cubone's another Pokemon like that, where you want to see, you want it to take off. It's goddamn, I'm losing my voice apparently while talking. You want to see it take off his goddamn helmet so you can see what Cubone looks like without a mask. This is another Pokemon that's going to be like that, where it's like, I want to see it without the hoodie, like the fake Pikachu looking hat going on. And I guess we should also talk about, before I end this off, the garden, the guardian Pokemon that's based on a fucking chicken slash rooster, Tapu Koko, who is a electric and fairy fairy type. What's it, like? Seems like I don't. It seems like the fairy typing is finally getting more love, which I'm actually surprised. Katara Guma isn't a fairy type in itself. Fairy fighting would have been an interesting typing, actually. I'm kind of sad by that. We also don't know if Katara Gamaru or. Mimikyu have evolutions. Katera Gamara wouldn't, I mean, Katera Guma wouldn't surprise me if it didn't. Mimikyu probably does, and it probably looks even more horrifying. 
Tapu Koko. We've seen enough of this thing in game, so I'm actually curious to see how much it plays into the story. But uh, as of first impressions, it's all right. If you were to ask me my favorites, because I don't mind telling you right now, it'd probably be Vikavolk. Uh, probably Vikavolk, Rock Rough, and mm, probably like to Toga Toga Gamaru or Komala. Everything else is either like okay or weird. But I like weird because weird is different, unlike what we usually get, which is a bunch of bullshit. Um I'm not saying Gen 6s was was a weak lineup. It just was a weak lineup in terms of like amount, not in terms of quality. This seems like it's gonna be a very weird and unique generation, and I'm looking forward to it. Because it doesn't seem like it's gonna be bland as fuck. And if the, the rumors based around um, the gym the gym situation is true, I am very interested to see where this goes, which I will probably talk about later because it looks like my voice is dying on me and I don't want to keep talking because I have to work the rest of this week, guys. So, yeah. Yeah. So, this has been the Insane Game Freak Team. Leave your thoughts and vote and... Yeah, your thoughts, maybe top three new Pokemon shown so far from Sun and Moon in the description below, in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. This has been the Insane Game Freak. Life's a game, play to win, and I will catch you guys later. P-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-